I, I, I built this wall but it, it was upside down it didn't quite work and then I built it again and it just fell over so I built it a third time which was good until it spontaneously caught fire which I don't think was what people really intended I like to start these videos with something allegedly funny or possibly witty I often miss the mark but it's worth a try unfortunately this time I'm gonna have to start with an apology there seems to have been something wrong with the video in this episode and the previous one, but I didn't notice it in time. And the video freezes from time to time. Unfortunately, it seems when I open certain menus. Are you still working on those guys? Change my mind, we're going back to stone cutting. Research that, there we go. It's gonna be done quicker, and uh, we also need it, I think more urgently at the moment. Well, I think we're gonna, we got the clothing survived the winter now, unless we have a, a terrible, terrible cold snap, which I don't think we're gonna get. Come on, Wendy, let's see what you can do. Normal, okay, I can live with normal. I can live with normal. Indoors, outdoors. I'm still in two minds about whether to keep this door wedged open. Uh, I think I'm gonna go back to keep this door wedged open. It's it's gonna make it cooler at night. It's just gonna make stuff last longer. How are you doing, Haley? And there we go, so there's the uh, the meals by the table, that's great. It used to be up to about April 4 that you could put the you could put the uh, the stockpiles over for the meals on top of the table, which made a load of sense to me, and I think it looked really good, but then um, time stopped it for some reason. I have no idea why. It, such a shame, really, because, as like I say, I think it just added, added an awful lot. You could just put the meals on the table, people could sit down and eat their meals. Shizzy having some breakfast there. Relaxing socially, all on his own. Hmm. I think we need to get this this room beautified up a little bit, um, as we don't actually have much in the way of building. I suppose we do, really, don't we? Let's let him finish this and then we'll, well, perhaps we'll start. Mad animal! The local hare has gone mad. Ooh. That's rotting, unfortunately. But it actually does make me think. Is there much food around here? We'll have a look at that in a minute. Right, let's follow this hare. Okay, right, that's close enough. Wendy, Haley, two arms. Let's just get you here. Where are you? Come on! Don't lose to a. Oh, there okay, we go. Good. Okay, so right, undraft you, and undraft you. Let's get that hair hold. That was a bit embarrassing. I've got to be honest with you. Uh, your health. Yeah, a couple of bites. We could actually do now, I think, with a 
medical bed. And I think we've got a bed floating around somewhere. We do here. So let's get that installed. We'll just put it in here. And that one could be used as our medical bed. But there's Shizzy treated. I suppose you need much medicine just to do a bandage. Yeah, and that's a couple more meals. Do need to get some tidying done. Oh, yes. Well done, Haley, and welcome to the tribe. Oh, okay, Trogo. Or, as you are otherwise known... No, that's the wrong one. Uh, Trogo, how do I rename? I've forgotten how to rename. There we go. Trogo, or as you are otherwise known. I'm a little bit uncomfortable about doing this, but... Andy Ray Sim, yes. My fiance, the male member of Hope's Corner, aged 23. So, you are you have a green thumb, you are psychically sensitive, and you are a night owl. You're a reclusive child. Andy Ray Sim didn't learn to speak until he was nearly five years old, and even then he preferred to keep to himself. When he was in his early teens, he made a habit of wandering off from the village to live in the wilderness for weeks at a time. And then he grew up. Andy Ray Sim is a master gatherer. He can find food in the most barren of places using his deep knowledge of plants, roots and berries. Okay, actually this one's not bad. Let's set you up a little bit. Incapable of social. I think we can live with that. We've got social people already. Um, let's give chairs. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Shizzy's throwing a party! Everyone who goes will gain joy and social energy and a lasting positive mood boost. You awake, Andy? Come on. Go to the party! There we go. That's so good to see. Look at all socialising and yeah, feeling good. Very comfortable. Okay, they're all happy, eating, talking. It's just so good to see, isn't it? Nice. Eating all the food, but who cares? Ah, I'm happy with that. The party is finished. Okay, let's get rid of one more of these horrible chairs. Deconstruct that one. And then we'll move those up. Wendy, if you could carry on building stuff, that would be good for us. And blow dead. We need you now as part of the team. But that's a good start. Cocoa pods. 
Hmm, food. We'll have that. Oh, that's not food. That's cycloid leaves. Right, we will, we will, yes, actually we will have that. How far away is it? Hmm. I'd like to take it as a, as a, just to sell it. But it's a long way away from camp. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, nobody's going to get round to it, so we'll just leave it there. Wendy, what are you doing? What? What? Says the turkey? What? What's going past my head so fast? <laughs> well done, Wendy. <laughs> now, if you get home without being brutally savaged by a bear, that's excellent. Right, uh, here you go. That lap blew up our food stores a little bit. It's our days. Hunting down. Come on, getting blowed at is part of the team, would be so good at this point. Not very useful person, but. 1.1% chance. Mm, I suppose you're right. It's, it's a horrible environment, isn't it? Okay, right. Uh, Haley, actually, wait a sec. Andy, what are you doing? You're hauling. Okay, Andy, right. I've got a job for you. I'm going to draft you. I'm going to come in here. And I want to force you to tidy this room up. So if I undraft you now, the only thing you can do in here is clean. There we go. Uh, so there we go. Reel out of the room and off you go. Load it hopefully now. We'll be a little bit happier when this wears off. Pirate Merchant from Policeman's Hill. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> oh dear. Brandon, Schultz, and Jansen's with some animals. Ooh. Well, hello. Let's just hope you don't. You can get through here without being brutally savaged by a warg. Yes, I think you're going to be all right, aren't you? Here we go. And then when you get down here, let's get our social person to talk to you. You still think the environment's hideous? Where are you going? Okay, if that's where you want to hang around. Okay, Haley. Uh, let's do some trading. Okay, we could sell Bloedet, which I'm actually quite tempted to do. It's given us a negative uh, mood for a little while, but it wouldn't be bad. Um, Sell an awful pistol. Yeah, I think we'll do that. We'll sell some awful cloth plants. Uh, oh, 67 cents. That was worth it, wasn't it? And I suppose we can sell the piler. That would be nice to have it. But I can make I can make bows. We'll sell that short bow as well. There we go. Um, got boom rats? No, we don't want boom rats. Oh, medicine was tempting, but not at that price. We're a very, very poor colony still. Um, anything here we really need? Nothing we can afford. There we go, we'll just go with that.
Haley Round successfully recruited Blodettes. Oh, that's so good. Right. That's going to give us so many problems, but we will deal with those problems. Okay, Rodette. Or, as you are otherwise known, Chris. Chris Viking. Okay, here we go. Chris, you are a male member of Hope's Corner. He is a child. Chris Viking was born into a powerful cult which shunned advanced technology and believed that all illness could be cured by cleansing the soul through sacred art. After his first glimpse of the outside world, he decided to run away. Chris Viking started off sculpting person-sized chunks of stone, but he soon began to think bigger. With the help of mining robots, he learned how to carve huge mountains out of cliff sides. Soon, the native parks of the Glitter World where he lived were full of giant rock figures. So, this has made him terrible at growing, but better at mining, and really, really good at artistic. We'll take you on for your mining at the moment, and we'll probably start... Actually, I think we can probably start thinking about artistic fairly soon, so that's not bad. Okay, right. Um... What's your gear like? Not quite good enough. Um, well, you're cabin fever, but we're going to get you running around. You won't be having a problem with that. You're cold. That's not surprising. And you got a bite scar. You really like Haley Round. And yeah, you're positive with uh, Shizzy and Wendy. Okay, right. Let's start thinking about what we're going to do with you. What clothes have we got to start off with? Nothing much. Mace. Um, okay. So we want a short bow. And we do dive tribal wear. Oh, sorry, I think we just want a load of stuff there. And I'll get Wendy to do that in the morning. Chris, you're going to have to struggle through without for a little bit. Let's have a look at your work. Okay, right. Uh, I've decided that I'm going to break my rule where everybody does growing. Chris has a growing skill of zero. And at the moment, I don't think we can risk losing the, the amount of crops he's going to cost us. So he's off. So basically, Chris's jobs will be repairing, mining, and art. Which is great. We have a lot of mining we need to do, um, which you can get going on. And let's make ourselves an art table. Uh, production. Sculptor's table. There we go. And we'll put that down in here. That can go there for now. Um, we install that at. Let's get these moved. And this one, and this one, and we we'll have this one. Oh, uh, so it's being built there. Okay, we'll leave that one there for a minute. And depending on what that one's like, oh. 
deconstruct that one and we'll reinstall this one 